Hello, my name is Kirioth, and this is just a very quick update as to my Purge the Pit Force, which is going to go to Warhammer World tomorrow for a nice, friendly little tournament. It is a 400 point limit. There is a special rule whereby you can take whatever war gear is available for the model. So if you want to take an Assault Marine with two chainsaws, you can do that as long as it's represented fairly on the model. And uh, so I've done, of course, what you would expect I would do, which is make a Redemptor Dreadnought with two heavy onslaught Gatling cannons and one normal onslaught Gatling cannon, because why would you not? And uh, there's also three Centurions. Now, I have done a video on this before, but they're now done. They're finished just in time, frankly. And uh, yeah, I'll just give you a quick look at what I've done and uh, the way they've been painted. So, ugh. okay, so there's the Centurions right there and uh, one Redemptor Dreadnought right there. Don't worry, I will rotate them so you can see them proper. So originally these guys were not going to be painted in the same colour scheme as my Dread Mob because I thought I'd try something new, something different, and then I hated it. It didn't look good, it, I, just, I just didn't like what I ended up with. It happens sometimes, doesn't it? You have an idea for a colour scheme, you try it out and you immediately think, you know what? It's just not solid, it's just not what I was after. So uh, these guys have become part of the Dread Mob. Uh, as such they are obviously very rusty boys. Uh, I've tried to introduce a bit of black in there as well this time around, a bit more gold just to make it, just to make certain parts stand out a little bit more. So as you can see with the Centurions, uh, there's a bit of conversion work that's gone in here whereby um, I've taken the areas where the missile launchers or hurricane bolters would normally go, I've chopped those off the chest, I've used normal Space Marine arms and attached them there instead, and so they're hefting the heavy bolter in both arms instead of having them underslung, one on each side. Uh, it's a conversion that I saw someone else do years ago. I've never been able to find pictures of it, and uh, I wanted to recreate it at some point. Couldn't remember the specifics, so I just did a bit of guesswork, but luckily, luckily, it I think it worked out okay. Uh, as you can also see, I've, I've left a lot of the, uh, the stuff that comes... But the kind of support struts on the legs there, I've I've not put those on, and I've hacked the legs at the at the waist, uh, kind of at the top there, so that I can repose them. So you've got one guy standing on a a power pack there, and uh, I've left one of them with just the standard walking pose because I quite like that actually that walking pose like that. They're still bulky, they're still big, but they don't look as goofy, I don't think, as the normal. Centurions, and I like the normal Centurions. Uh, I've got three of them that are just built standard. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I fancy to be something just a bit different with these. So, so yeah, I uh, I switched out the way they were the way they were holding the gun, which I'm actually really happy with. I think it's come out with pretty solid. Obviously, it kind of defeats the point because they're just holding it like a normal Devastator now. But you know, rule of cool, isn't it? You do it because it's fun, not necessarily because it makes more sense. At least that's the approach I've taken with everything else in the Dread Mob, so why stop now, you know? So yeah, there's that guy, and then finally, I've tried to do a bit more like variation in terms of basing this time around as well. I'm not I'm not great at basing, but I tried to make it a bit more interesting at the very least. Um I've used uh, I've used some some extra stuff on the base to kind of aid the crackle and things. So I've got this uh Vallejo earth texture which I put a layer of that on first, and then I put the um, Agrelin Earth over the top of it, which has kind of given it a more lumpy, lumpy kind of rocky texture. So yeah, I really like the pose on this guy. I kind of have him stepping back and bracing against rocks, about to lift the heavy bolter. Uh, this was the only heavy bolter that I didn't have to severely cut apart and mess with to make it fit. The heavy bolters that the actual Centurions came with did not fit properly. I had to cut stuff and add stuff onto them. In fact, I think... No, you can't really tell. <laughs> That's... I'm impressed. So I had to take apart other heavy bolters and attach them at the end there. It's... I think, now that it's painted at least, it's pretty seamless. It's not noticeable. Uh, I think it's actually worked out okay with these guys, whereby... I don't think you would immediately know that those had been messed with. It's kind of it's come out okay. So yeah, those are the three Centurions. Um, and finally, because I mean it's a Redemptor, obviously, we've got the big chunky boy himself with the tiny head. I did I did try 
a like an Imperial Knight helmet. I did try um, what was the other head that I tried? I tried a head from my armature as well. It didn't work weirdly. I think it's because I think it's because I know you know you know that in a dreadnought you have a Space Marine. A Space Marine is in the dreadnought, and the whole idea for this guy was having the Space Marine sarcophagus like incorporate the body, incorporate the head. So whilst it does look like he's got a tiny head, a larger head looked weirder somehow. Because I think in I think as I was looking at it, I was like, his head's too big. It should be the size of a normal Space Marine. It's a normal Space Marine in there. Space Marines don't have giant heads. So why has this guy got a giant head? Like it didn't make it didn't make any sense. So I, uh, I ended up doing it this way and sticking with it this way. Uh, I added the cables onto it. I wanted something a bit more. I wanted a bit of that green, that green glow because I still really like that. Again, I know that's very. Uh, I know it's a bit contentious. Some of you like it, some of you really don't like it. But I like it, and it gives like a massive amount of contrast to certain parts of the model. Again, I added a bit of black here and there just to try and break it up a little bit. I added a bit more gold as well. So yeah, um, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with how this has come out, and of course it can be used with the rest of the dread mob now, which is which is an added bit of fun. But yeah, I'm 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 pretty chuffed with how these have come along. I mean, having to repaint them pretty close to the event was a bit stressful, but uh, I'm happier with them like this by far than I was with the other color scheme. I tried a kind of fading black, grey, and white color scheme, and some parts of it I really liked, and some parts of it I just absolutely hated, and I couldn't quite get the balance right, and I couldn't quite get the like the gradients right on some of the armor plates, and I, I just... The more I looked at it, the more I was like, it's going to take way too long to fix this. It's going to take longer to fix this than it would to just repaint them. So uh, I, I just decided to repaint them. And to be honest, I'm way happier with them now than I was when I was doing that other color scheme. Um... And it means I can add them into that existing Dreadnought army. So, yeah. That is my Purge the Pit Force. If you're wondering, uh, kind of, the general loadout. So, as I say, two Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannons and one normal one. Not normally allowed, but it's okay in this tournament. Um, and these guys essentially have modified Heavy Bolters with the fact that they're, like, extra long and have different magazines than they normally have, um, which are acting as, you know, the Heavy Bolters that... Centurions come with anyway, and Hurricane Bolters. So, essentially, this thing's pumping out 30 shots of just Onslaught Gatling Cannon goodness. Um, there's 6 Heavy Bolter shots from each of these, and 12 Hurricane Bolter shots from each of these. They've got a lot of firepower, almost no anti-tank, so if anyone, you know, people are going to bring tanks, I'm going to get wrecked, and I've got almost no close combat presence at all, with the exception of the Dreadnought, which I still don't want in close combat, because it's got three Onslaught Gatling Cannons. So, I'm probably not going to do very well. In fact, I'm probably going to lose horribly to everything I come up against. But, I don't care. Because the whole the whole thing for me was like, putting together a force with some fun conversions that I've been thinking about doing for ages. Um, trying a different paint job, which admittedly didn't work out in the end, but I'm happy with how they look now. And uh, it kind of also gave me a bit of an excuse to just try and mess with how I base things a bit to make it a little bit better. As you can see, I have actually bothered to paint the rims of these. I'm going to go through and do that with the rest of the Dreadmob as well. And some of the extra stuff that I've done to these, like the black panels and things like the uh, like the oil wash on the gun and using a bit of purple on the end there just to make a little bit... It doesn't show up on camera grey, unfortunately. Just to make a bit of a colour difference on the end. This is all stuff that I'm going to go back and do to the rest of the Dread Mob. Um, I'm going to go back and pick out a lot of the details a lot better as well. There's just been more use of gold in kind of little bits painted here and there that different colours to the kind of gun metal that I've used for them that just stand out a little bit better, I think. So, yeah, that is that is the Purge the Pit Force. They are, they're called the Iron Storm, and they have a tiny bit of backstory, which is basically... They do not give a shit what they shoot at, so they were put in time out for a year, and this looks like a suicide mission. So they can either go in and earn themselves redemption, or they can die in the attempt. And either way, the chapter master does not care, because they deserve it. So yeah, very much a, a death or glory or both situation. But yeah, that is, that's a little update on that little force. I will probably do a video on Monday telling you about how it went. Um, I'll get as many pictures and stuff as I can. If I can film a bit of it, that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. As I say, 400 points, 
it's going to be it's going to be a fun tournament. I'm pretty sure I'm going to come dead last, most likely. But I don't really care. As you as you guys know by that by this point, I'm not in it for the competitive. I'm just in it for the fun models for the most part. So yeah, I will uh, I'll do a video on Monday with how it went and tell you just how badly I uh, I did. Very is probably the answer. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't if you don't want to. And uh, as always, there's an affiliate link for Element Games in the description. If you click that and buy something, I get something for sending you that way. And uh, you save a bunch of money off whatever you are buying, all the tabletop shit in the world they've got in stock. And 10% uh, of anything you spend there goes to charity end of the month. So, a little bit extra, just, just if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I, I leave it in your capable hands. In the meantime, wish me luck. And uh, I'll speak to you again in a couple of days. Toodaloo.